Welcome to your community. This is your hometown. This is Walton Entertainment. This is where you can hear from the community and those making a difference. We explore topics, local festivals, arts and entertainment, and local news. For this program and much more, visit us online at yourlocalstream.com. That's yourlocalstream.com. Let's read I'm Big Enough. It's by Amber Stewart and Lane Marlowe. Let's read. Bean was big enough. She was big enough to hop all the way around Stickleback Pond without stopping. She was big enough to go dandelion picking and to choose the juiciest ones for Mommy to cook. Bean was even big enough to swing the highest of all her friends so high her giggles could be heard over and beyond Bluebell Wood. So high her tummy tumbled as she flew up. She was big enough to do all these things. But was Bean big enough to stop taking her blanket just about everywhere she went? No, said Bean. I love my blankie. Maybe you could try doing things without your blanket, said Mommy and Daddy gently. Yes, blankets are for babies, said Bean's big brother. No, they're not, said Bean. So Bean made a plan just in case her family decided to take her blanket away. She called it the Keep Blanky Forever Plan. Early in the morning, Bean set out to hide her blanket in a special secret place. It wasn't on the edge of Stickleback Pond because the frogs might find it. It wasn't between the branches of Thunderstruck Tree because the birds might take it. It wasn't buried in the soft earth because the mice might want it. Bean was just wondering if she would ever find the right spot when she saw a hollow log hidden by overgrown bushes. Bean hid her blanket deep in the hollow log and hurried home. She was happy all day knowing that the blanket was safe. But when bedtime drew near, Bean wanted her blanket. She had never had a bedtime without cuddling her blanket, and she didn't want one now. So Bean set out to her secret hiding place to bring her blanket back home. The woods looked different in the early evening light. All the hollow logs seemed the same, and now Bean wasn't sure which one was her hiding place. Was her blanket in that hollow log? Or that one? Or that one? Oh no, cried Bean. 
My plan didn't work. I've lost Blanky. Poor Bean had no choice but to return home blanketless. And close to tears, she saw Mommy. Bean, where did you go? Mommy asked. To look for Blanky, sniffed Bean, but I couldn't find it. Bean's family was very kind about the lost blanket disaster. Daddy read her two extra bedtime stories, and Mommy made her hot milk to help her sleep. And Bean's brother lent her his second favorite teddy bear. Bean didn't like her first bedtime without her blanket. She didn't much like her second or third either. But soon, looking for her blanket turned into looking for ladybugs and four-leaf clovers and making the very best hideouts and going hollow log sledding until Bean had forgotten all about her blanket. One windy spring day, a long time later, Bean and her friends were chasing dandelion seeds in the sunny part of the woods when she saw the strangest thing. Bean looked at the tiny baby fox and knew now that her mommy was right. She really was much too big for her blanket. The end. Hi there! Thank you for coming to read with me today. Today we're going to read The Sparkling Princess. It is by Ed Riley and Daniela Dogliani. Let's read. It was the night of the winter ball and the princess with the most beautiful gown would win a prize. Princess Pearl really, really wanted to win. She'd had a fabulous dress made, especially for the ball. As Princess Pearl got into the carriage, her father said, You look beautiful, my darling. Truly the most beautiful princess in all the world. You really do look lovely, said her mother. Now remember to give the queen this cake. It's raspberry and chocolate, her favorite. Along the way, Princess Pearl came across a family of rabbits. They were freezing in the winter cold. I cannot see you freeze, she said. Here, please take my cloak to keep your family warm. Next, the coachman stopped at the side of a family of foxes. They could find no food in the frozen forest. I cannot see you go hungry, she said to the daddy fox. Here, please take this cake to feed your family. When she saw a poor man crying in the street because he was late for his daughter's party, Princess Pearl stopped. You must take my carriage to get to the party on time. And please, take this tiara as a present for your daughter. Just before she got to the palace, 
Princess Pearl saw a dog struggling to cross the river. Without a thought for her fabulous dress, she waded in and rescued the dog. He was so grateful to Princess Pearl that he went with her to the palace. The queen should know what a wonderful thing Pearl had done. When she got to the ball, Princess Pearl was surprised to see everyone she had helped along the way. The queen was so impressed with what Princess Pearl had done that she gave her a prize. A good heart is the most important thing for a princess to have. The end. Hi there, today we're going to read Even Monsters by A.J. Smith. Let's read. Let's read. Everybody knows monsters roar. Roar! Okay. Time to get up. But did you know? Even, even roaring monsters put on clean underwear in the morning. They eat a well-rounded breakfast and comb the cooties out of their fur. Everybody knows monster snarl. Snarl! But did you know? Even snarling monsters ride the bus to school. They learn their ABCs and draw in art class. Everybody knows monsters grumble, grumble, but did you know? Even grumbling monsters love soccer. They hide in tree forts and even play video games? Everybody knows monsters growl. Growl! But did you know? Even growling monsters have to finish their dinner Skibu, stop playing with your food. And take a bath and brush their teeth. Everybody knows monsters howl. Howl! Okay, boys, time for bed. But did you know? Sometimes even the most roaring, snarling, grumbling, growling, howling monsters are afraid of the dark. And that's why...
Sometimes even monsters need a kiss goodnight. The end. Creative artists can offer you a wide range of video production. Call the experts and discuss your project today, whether it's your special event or your company. Creative Artist, 770-267-7368. Creative Artist produces this program you're watching. Call Creative Artist today, 770-267-7368. Creative artist, they'll put you in the spotlight.
welcome to the Georgia Aquarium. This is a great place if you want to bring your kids, bring your family. This is a great place to come. Plenty of fish and sea life here to see, but a warning. If you haven't eaten, do that before you get here because every foot of this place smells like Captain D's. <laughs> Smell it. It's like shrimp, fish.
jellyfish, and that's because they're related to the sea anemones and coral, not fish. Jellies, anemones, and coral belong to a phylum of animals known as cnidarians. In 1953, two hearts met. Meet Bobby and Frank, who've seen some good times and some not so good times. But they've stayed together and still married after 66 years. She lived in Decatur. I lived in College Park. And as long as that car would run, I'd go to Decatur. Sometimes the car wouldn't run, so I hitchhiked. When I was working on a car, she ride the bus, she worked, and she rode the bus out to the house. Now I get the car fixed and take her home. I uh, took engagement ring and get engaged. And that was somewhere around uh, early September or October, I don't remember. And then we set the date for 9-11, I think it was on a Saturday. Her grandfather was a minister and he married us in his house. We moved in with her grandparents for a while. Then I uh, uh, built the house in College Park and we moved there and stayed 25 years. And from College Park, we went to Fett County and lived 10 years. She wanted to retire in the mountains, so we go to the mountains and find a house and move to LJ and spent 10 years. And the arthritis got me down, so I moved to back in the, in the middle of my three boys and girl. And we've been there now for 14 years. Our first house that we moved into, I was uh, working with Good Brothers Poultry, delivering chickens. And one day at lunchtime, I come home and found her ex-boyfriend there. <laughs> and he was, uh, Oh man, it, it shocked him. I mean, he, he didn't know. I don't normally go home for lunch, but I did that. <laughs> and he was a he was an exterminator for bugs, and he was there. I just come by to visit. Said, yeah, <laughs> I know what he's up to. But anyway, he stayed a few more minutes than he left. He never did come back no more. And uh, we lost contact. And he was a good friend. We was in the church. And the preacher said, I want to ask some questions about some of you that's been married a long time. And I said, and he started off with anybody has been married 30 years, and a bunch of them held a hand up, and 
They, he asked them all questions and they answered them. Then he said, anybody over, over 40 years? And they started up and asked all the questions. Then he got around to the, anybody over 50 years? And there was, I think, three couples in there. And the other two couples stood up and told them why. And the other two stood up and told them why. And then they got around to me. And I said, keeping your mouth shut. <laughs> Everybody in that church started dying laughing. <laughs> And she turned around and looked at her friend and then she said, <laughs> oh me. Oh she done oh she packed her bag to what, about a month ago? <laughs> about a month ago she packed her bags and where are you going? I don't know. I'm going somewhere. She got in the car and gone about fifteen minutes and come back and unpacked. <laughs> Oh, I just buy me an old folks home and move into it. <laughs> She's still at home. Just but he's been far. so good to me. And that's what marriage is all about. <laughs> not the fussing and not the fighting and not the getting back together. But it's the making up that is important. And if anybody is having trouble, sit down and talk about it. And you can get over it. And this is one of the things that we have always been able to do since, <laughs> since we get mad at each other. <laughs> but we all, uh, you know, everybody has their problems, but he's always took care of everything. He has. He's been a wonderful husband. And um, we've had four kids, and I wouldn't change a thing. I really wouldn't, because We had some bad times, I mean, everybody does. But trust is one of the most important things in marriage. If you can't trust each other, you can't get through it. And so we had to, of course, we had our little arguments, you know, but Never did we, I think I left him one time, didn't I? <laughs> Twice, he said. <laughs> but uh, I know that we've been together a long time. And he can't go nowhere now. <laughs> he got to stay with me now. Yeah. And, uh, we love each other, that's what counts. Mm -hmm.